hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this amazing planet today. Today is January 16th, 2023, Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. Hopefully um, your Mondays are as cool as mine because I wake up and I get to do art stuff. If not, that's cool. Go through your day, get your art done a little bit later. That's totally awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about the design process, taking our painting idea from the last live stream, which is going to be all about keeping going, never giving up, perseverance. We're going to be using the wisdom from a tiger. If you remember, tigers are only successful about 4% of the time when they hunt. And we want to embody that tiger. Hey, thanks, Tanker. I appreciate the, the good morning and the indication of mu music levels. <laughs> awesome. So we want to embody that tiger. Keep going. Never give up. Have perseverance for our dreams. We're going to do it for the bigger things in life and for the smaller things like this painting. The painting process takes some time. And if we spend the time in the front end, like we are going to be doing today, we did yesterday and the day before, uh, it just makes this painting go so much smoother, right? Okay. And then, you know, specifically, this is paintings that you want to take to a higher level. Of course, if you're an artist that is learning, um, learning to draw, learning to paint. These are your, your bigger paintings, the paintings that you want to see in a gallery one day, the, the paintings that will represent you as an artist. You may continue to work on paintings that are drawing or, or whatever, do art every day that helps your skill level increase. But this is going to be a bit, bit larger. I actually, what I would suggest, if you're going through school right now, if you're learning any kind of art process, have your own projects going, you know, things you want to paint and love, love to paint. It's a lot, it's easier to keep motivated that way. Because usually if you're working on just schoolwork or just getting better, quote unquote, a lot of times it can be demotivating. All right. So I remember we collected some images yesterday and I looked at these a bit further uh, yesterday as well. And I was very happy with everything that we pulled out from all of our different resources that we have a, can take advantage of on the interwebs, internets. And I went through and I, and I made some notes on this document, which this, this credit document and everything I do on this live stream is available on my Gumroad. So if you want to go dive further into all of the resources and use them for yourself, especially today, because I'm going to give you a design process, you can download it for $10 on Gumroad. And at some point in these live streams, I always give a 50% discount. I'll give you that code soon. But I made some notes and yeah, it's really nice doing this way because I can, you know, gain some clarity on what I want to use. And uh, I have the, the images that I want to use. These, basically, these last three images I'm going to be using. But before we do that, we're going to jump into the design process. And I'm going to look at this document. We looked at this once before. And this one is made for 20 by 30 images, like a 20 by 30 ratio. And that's the painting size we're going to be working on. 20 by 30. Write that down. So that's composition sketches. We write stuff up here. Twenty by thirty. There's lots of layers in this document, but unfortunately, the um, our rectangles for thumbnail sketches are horizontal, not vertical. So we have to make some changes there, which should be fine. Uh, so that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to edit the document because you want it to be something close to 
uh, what you want, at least the ratio that you want. So thumbnail sketches. Oh, all the rectangles are part of the text. So this is something I can fix in this document for you. So when you get it and we need to make uh, 10 thumbnail boxes that are vertical for this painting and have a 20 by 30 ratio or a two by three ratio. Okay. It's pretty easy to make a box in Krita. You can pick out whatever brush you want. So I got this brush, which is like a, a straight line brush, kind of small. Then I could, I could drop it down maybe a couple points or a couple pixels, something like that. Maybe one more. And with our key bind, shift R, you can just draw a box, you know, pretty quickly. But we need to make sure that that box is of the correct um, ratio, which we're going to do down here. So we have um, in our tool options panel, you can change the width and the height. So we're going to have to be kind of messing around with this a little bit. Usually what I like to do is I'll set the width to something like um, 200 pixels and 300 pixels for the height. And we'll see what we get. Oh, it's not locking the ratio. Oh, I have to hit the lock thing. That would be helpful. So we can lock the 200 pixels in. We can lock the 300 in. And we can see what size this is first. So it just appears there. So it's a bit small, but the ratio is 0.67. So we can lock the ratio and then unlock the size and then hit control Z to get rid of that box. And now we have a ratio that will always stay at a two, three ratio and we can change the size of it no matter what. But first let's get rid of the boxes that are already there. Control R for selection. And I'm just going to, this is a rectangular selection tool. I'm gonna to select everything here and then move the selection. When moving the selection in Krita, you have to like put your cursor right on the edge to grab it and then find the layer where my rectangles are and then delete. There we go, done. Now let's zoom back in at 100%. Go back to Shift-R for our box creation. And we need to do 10 of these all the same size, but we're really only gonna draw one, maybe two, because I wanna make sure that, so there's one right there, and then I'm gonna insert a new um, layer. Actually, no, I'm not gonna draw this one, and I'm not gonna insert a new layer. I'm just going to Control J and copy this layer then move that box down and make your life a lot easier. There we go. I can line these up if I want to. I like to have a bit of space between them so we can make notes. And then I believe I can select multiple layers and hit control J. Yeah, and it will duplicate more and we need to get 10 of these. So what you do is as you duplicate, you duplicate the duplication or copy the copy. <laughs> so it gets faster and faster. So there's eight and then we only need two more. Wow, this takes up a lot less room. So we have five and five. And you may be looking at this thinking, oh geez, this, these are really small thumbnails. But that's that's really good. That's uh, what we want. We want really small thumbnails here. And then we can just merge all these together. I think we can do it all at once. Just select a bunch and control E. We'll merge it. And then I have one more here, I think. Yeah. 
Control E will merge down, and then I can even write this out. 20 X 30 rectangles. There we go. And probably what I'll do is go ahead and save this to a document. I'm going to save as because we're going to do a bunch of writing all over it. And I want you guys to get a blank document of here. And we're going to call it design process 20 by 30 vertical blank. All right, good. So that's the blank document. Save as one more time. Sorry, going through this whole thing. And then this one's gonna be the tiger document. <clears throat> Could have done all that off stream, made it a lot, a bit more entertaining for you, but it's also something that you probably wanna do anyways, because you may not like exactly how this document's set up. So the first thing we're going to do is write. We did a lot of that yesterday where we were writing about what we're creating. And it's the whole idea of perseverance. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Thinker, I told my wife that you came up with that word perseverance. And she's like, yes, that's a perfect word for this. Could be the name, name for the painting at the end. So thank you again for that. So let's review what we wrote real quick. Um, Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna move this to the right so I can write on it. Tiger, perseverance. So that's gonna be my heading for it. And then part of this document is a a whole um, grouping of text that you can turn on and off. And this is a text layer where you can do, where you, you will eventually write over it, but ask a bunch of questions. Um, list uh, the main objects and characters in the scene. Uh, it's probably gonna be tiger, number one. And then I'm thinking about having a bit of the jungle uh, behind, so that would be number two. Uh, what are you trying to say with this design? And, you know, originally I used the word design within this. Um, we're, we're thinking composition too. Those words are interchangeable. So I want to communicate perseverance. That's what I want to, I want to say. That's what I want to try and uh, communicate to whoever's looking at this. Does this match with the per uh, with the purpose of your art? So this is on a broad scale. Um, does it match with what I really want to do? You know, we're checking in with motivation again. Well, yes, I would love to influence someone's life and think, wow, I need to, I need to, um, you know, persevere a bit more on that really hard project I'm working on or to my dream. Yes. If I could get a painting, one single image that influences people, you know, better or as good as well as my YouTube videos, I, I would love it. That'd be fantastic. So yeah, that works. Uh, what mood do you want your audience to be in throughout the design? Hmm. I want to, the mood here, I would like to capture a sense of awe. Yeah, definitely. A sense of awe. And I'm just gonna write down a couple things. High contrast. Yeah, mainly high contrast. Single light source. Yeah. Is there a story? Hmm. 
Yeah, I believe, I mean, more of a narrative, I guess, within this, not so much as a story that has, a, well, it does have a beginning and end, so yeah, it definitely has a story. What ha happens before and after this scene? Before would be not much. I'm thinking of uh, Tiger. Here's what I'm, I'm thinking of. The tiger is searching. for the next hunt. You know, <clears throat> for some reason, this reminds me of Michelangelo's um, David because he sculpted David at the moment, not the moment when he was victorious, you don't see him holding the, the head of Goliath or anything like that, right? Um, he decided to sculpt him at the moment of decision. The moment when he decided that he was going to take on this difficult challenge and possibly die from it, you know. Didn't, you know, and you know, maybe you know the story, story of David and Goliath, but is really interesting because I don't know if you can see it within the sculpture, but there's a time before and a time after. Like that moment of decision is, is really an interesting aspect in life. Something to capture within your artwork. Uh, what happened before? What's going to be happening after? You know, what moment are you in right now? So the next question, what is the function of this moment within the story? So the function of this is to, well, it's, uh, hopefully it shows perseverance. But I want to show uh, the constant and never ending. drive yeah like always searching for the next meal you know what's the next thing that I need need to do to reach my dream kind of thing what's the next what's up next okay let's knock that pin down let's get to the next one yeah how are you going to take your audience there I think you know through the high contrast lighting um, hopefully trying to communicate that all within it uh, definitely get a majestic kind of idea going and we're going to do that with you know accurate drawing hmm. hopefully it'll be striking Tigers are very striking animals. I mean, that's why a lot of the paintings are done where they're looking at you straight on because, I mean, those, those huge cat eyes are just mesmerizing. What in your design is contributing to the motive? We've kind of covered that high contrast, single light source. Um, the one thing I want to say is, you know, tiger in the center. Oh, um, camera angle below. Yeah, definitely a below camera angle. Trying to go for a heroic shot. What can you leave out without changing what you're trying to say? Well, it's gonna be fairly simple as it is. Um, it's going to be a fairly simple composition, honestly. Tiger in the center, dark background. Um, but I'll, I'll make a note here, you know, don't let the background override the tiger. It's 
stop, close your eyes and visualize the scene before moving on. I've actually done that already. I haven't really closed my eyes, but I have a vision of what I want it to look like. You know, this happens to me a lot and maybe as an artist it ha this happens to you, but someone will say something or you'll get an idea that pops in your head and, and immediately it goes visual in, in your head. You, you can see the scene. Like I can see the tiger, um, you know, and actually just thinking about it like that, I need to put down rock because we're going to be visualizing the tiger from below and they're going to be above us. The front paws are going to be on kind of a rock that's higher than the back paws. And we have an image that almost matches that perfectly. And so this kind of really angular back that's happening and then uh, high contrast lighting on the tiger with a dark background um yeah high cross uh, single light source and then i want to get a glow from it this is something that you can do within krita and we'll, we'll work on that is with um what do they call it color dodge which is, you know, a, a different way of using color or layers within um, Photoshop and Krita and, and many other software where you get this just amazing glow, like one stroke of your brush and you get this crazy glow that happens. Uh, and I've always wanted to reproduce that in a painting. I haven't quite got there yet. <clears throat> Write that down, color dodge. Definitely. Okay, so next step is an object drawing. And this is tiny, this is like really small for me. I mean, it's it's probably as big as the, uh, the palm of my hand, but I mean, in digital, now it's twice as big. You just <laughs> zoom in a little bit and there you go. You have something a lot larger. But, but to do that, what I'm going to do is create a new folder Actually, I'm just gonna put this document in a folder with Control G and then I'm gonna write all notes just to make sure that I know that this is where all the notes go. The cool thing that you can do in Krita is you can right click on any of these layers and set a color to it. So I can set this one to green, right? And I know that all my notes go in here and in this um, folder or group. They don't call them folders or call them groups. And then what I do want to make sure that I do is, is not adjust any of these other layers right now. Um, so I'm going to lock them all and make sure that I don't paint on any of them. The, even the thirds right now, I'll lock them because if I'm I think you can, can you still move them if they're locked? No, you can't even move them if they're locked. So um, really just uh, making sure that I don't screw up something. But I will open up our collection of images. And I put those in a different folder. I'm really organized with everything. I think it's really important as an artist to be very organized. It's kind of one of those things where you don't see a lot of organized artists, right? But uh, we're gonna try and be as organized as possible. So I'm gonna open up a f a f four of these images here, maybe five, that I'm gonna be pulling from of these tigers that we got. And the first thing that I want to draw <clears throat> that we need to get really clear on, some clarity on, is the head of the tiger. For some reason, I just remembered the Rocky movie, you know, the eye of the tiger. <laughs> I remember when that movie came out. I was really young then. All right. So I'm just going to copy this head of the tiger, throw it into our group, and it's huge. So I'm going to zoom out. 
Control T to adjust the size, but I don't want to hold shift. Actually, I do want to hold shift because shift will make sure that I don't change the aspect ratio. I go back and forth from Photoshop and in, in my Photoshop document, I need the whole shift to change aspect ratio. We're just going to throw this tiger up here and this image is going to be tiny. I hit one so I can zoom back in again. And I'm going to work on the head of this tiger and just get a, a bit of understanding. Hit insert for new layer and just, you know, do some free drawing. It doesn't really matter how accurate it is. I'm just going to use a basic brush, getting the right size for it right now. And I don't know why my phone is not on do not disturb. Oh, it is. Maybe I'm getting a message from my family. No. I have to come back to that. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I like the tiger looking off this way, but I think ah, we'll do it this way. Well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll get an understanding of the head regardless because the tiger's looking off to the right. We may put the tiger looking off to the left. I mean, that's really easy to do. You just select the layer. You go up to layer, go to transform, and then mirror layer horizontally. And it throws it right on the other side. But now the tiger's looking, yeah, I like the tiger looking off to the left for some reason. I like where the light source is too. Okay, back onto my drawing layer. And simple shapes here. Let's see if we can get, I mean, we're looking at a basic circle, right? I want my pen to be a bit smaller. Actually, let's move to a drawing. Oh, I don't have it on here. After the restart, I had to make some changes. Favorites. I like this as a drawing utensil. Welcome to my stream. Drawing a tiger head. I like this one because I can get really light with it. I can kind of catch in some ideas real quick. Get the overall shape of the head. Start getting the ears. Really need to remove this song from my playlist. I hate the little clinking sounds in the background. <laughs> Let's get some ears in there. Let's not do Mickey Mouse. This is a cat, not a mouse. And then the most important thing that we need to make sure that we understand and form here is going to be this muzzle and how it comes out of the head. So the brow, I mean, we can look at this just as just like we would a human. The brow is up here. There's a, a huge slant going on with the brow. And then that feeds into this just massive um, bridge of the nose. Let's keep this in, in very simple terms here. And then, you know, the essential triangle at the end of the nose for all cats. The mouth is here. And then the eyes. We have to make sure that we get the eyes sunken into the brow. Just like on humans, the eyes are sunken in. And then the angle of the eyes is really interesting. They're like this. Circular in the center. As I build this up, I can see right away that my ears are misplaced. And that's okay. 
the more you add to a drawing, the more aspects of it you can use to judge the rest of the drawing, the closer you get. Not going to worry about too much on shading here, but I'm going to throw in some indications. There's always this um, urge to do a lot of shading, but you got to be careful with that because it can cover up, it, you can utilize it to cover up bad drawing. And why do I say this? Because I do it all the time. Bad drawing, add shading, cover it up. But, you know, honestly, it doesn't really cover it up. <laughs> People can still see that that drawing's bad. You know, something's kind of off with that tiger. It's weird. Okay, I need more shading. Cover all that bad stuff up. <laughs> nope, still kind of strange. Okay. So this ear is up here. It starts on the edge of the eye. That's not too bad. Not too far off. Goes here. This ear starts like on the bridge of the nose. We talked about drawing and all I'm doing here is dropping verticals and horizontals in my head. You, know, you get something that you get something down that you're going to say is correct. And then you drop horizontal and verticals from that to measure everything else against it. But you always have to have that point of what is correct, that definition of this is right. If you don't have that, you don't have anything to measure against on your piece. I mean, or else um, you're going to be measuring constantly from your reference. And we want to break away from the reference eventually. You know what's going to be interesting? that you see right away in this um, is all of the stripes, the tiger stripes are gonna be fun to do. The texture of the fur, you know, how are we gonna capture that? There's a lot going on here. It reminds me of my job because it's very technical, you know, we do uh, web development kind of stuff or a huge platform that's been out there for over a decade. And when you have a program that you've been working on for that long, nothing is simple anymore. You know, because everything you do affects everything else. So when you're starting a painting, <clears throat> what happens is you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just draw a tiger. You know, I'll paint a tiger. And then you get into it, and you're like, holy cow, look at all the complexity that's here that I didn't realize. And that's why it's important to go through this phase. It, it'll help you determine, that nose needs to be a lot wider. It'll help you determine if this is something you really want to do. Do I want to commit to all this time and all this minute effort to describe um, to describe all of the specific little details within the stripes no I'll just give up no no I'm not gonna do this let's stop <laughs> not gonna embody the tiger you know what in this phase this is this is the best time to do it. Don't get like super invested in something if at the very beginning you're like, I really don't know. Better to kind of put it aside, bring it back later. If you're at that point, but no, I'm still, I'm motivated to do this. I'm very motivated. Getting detailed here, I shouldn't. What, what I, um, what needs to be done here is grabbing one of these brushes and working up some of the bigger block values. 
So let's do that. Let's make this brush a little bit smaller. But I'm gonna create a new layer over this. You know, try to be as um, undestructive as possible with when you're doing these. Oh, see, that's too small. There we go. I'll just change the size as I go. I'm such a traditional artist that a lot of times I forget to do those things, like changing sizes of brushes and stuff like that. And actually, I want to take off the opacity on this brush. So we'll go into the brush settings up here at the top left, and we're going to look for something like opacity, which does have pressure enabled on it. So let's see what we got now. Okay, no opacity whatsoever, just completely black. Um, let's go ahead and close that. I think it's a bit more jagged edges. It's probably because I'm zoomed in. If I hit 100%. Nope, still jagged edges. That's fine. Uh, let's change the color so it's a little bit lighter. Okay. Just trying, to, um, what I'm gonna do is I, I like that change the opacity of this later that's what I'll do I like that uh, this photo has a very definite light source and I'm going to outline that light source outline the, sh the shadow area within the head of this tiger and what this can do is just give us even more understanding of where the lights are coming from and it gets confusing in some places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to select that layer. I'm going to go to filter, adjust, and we're going to pick um, levels. I'm going to try and blow out these levels. There you go. So you can do something like this. I could even turn this black and white. I'm going to create a filter mask so I don't destroy that layer. And now I can see exactly uh, there's some confusion because th these lighter areas within the shadow, the white that's in the shadow makes it confusing, but there's a definite idea of uh, form there that we need, we want to capture. Just in a very simple way, fill that whole thing in. Now I can turn off those levels. Yeah, you see the understanding that you you gain. That well, I I feel the understanding that I gained from that um, a bit more. just by having the levels simplified. I'm gonna insert another layer and this will help me darken up everything. Change the opacity of that just a little bit. This doesn't have to look exactly like what you're drawing. What we're doing here is gaining understanding. And I say that because this drawing's not looking very good. <laughs> as long as I come out of this with a better understanding of the form of this tiger's head, um, that's the most important part. view on this and bring some of that opacity back. Then I'm going to hit control E and merge that together and change the opacity to the whole layer.
always enjoy working in layers on everything that I do, just kind of building things up uh, digitally and traditionally. Now I know that this muzzle is going to come out a lot further and there'll be more shadow over here than on the muzzle, but the muzzle turns in space. So more light on the front and then it drops off really drastically back here. Standing, I think. Another thing we can do, so if I take my tiger um, image here, the reference that we're working from, let me hit S so I can get a free selection tool and really cut that tiger out a bit more so he's not interrupting everything else. Create a new layer get back to that basic brush that we were using and then turn it red or orange. I got this nice orange sitting there. Oh, I see Thinker's making a bunch of... I was just busy drawing Thinker. I wasn't watching chat. <laughs> uh, he uh, In your process, would you go through an object drawing that you are already very familiar with? Hmm. That uh, depends on the familiarity of it. If I know that, uh, you know, the, the design may ask me to rotate that object in space when I don't have a reference, I will probably, even though I know the object well, I would probably work on this simple drawing of it rotated. Yeah, uh, of a subject you are very familiar with. Oh, oh, a subject. Yeah, I knew what you meant. You know, an object, a subject, something, you know. I mean, I'm very familiar with a human body. With the makeup of it. With, I mean, I'm very familiar with this coffee cup or teacup that I'm holding, right? Just a cylinder, but I'd still draw them. Definitely. Um, because there's going to be different positions there. There's going to be different, you know, uh, yeah, you know, there's just so much complexity. This can only help really. This is, and this document is just like the preview, you know, where, you know, many artists, you, you see, um, art, you know, ancient artists or artists centuries ago or decades ago um, and even now if they're coming up with a, a new painting you'll see all these different sketches about that painting about uh, you know the figures they'll put the figures in a certain orientation and then maybe they're like i don't really understand that hand very well so they'll draw a hand like 10 or 15 times to make sure that they got the understanding of the hand um yeah I mean, this is why you see in digital realms, they use uh, three dimensional because if you have a, a figure that you can pose and light and move the camera around at any angle, you can get to those understandings really quickly rather than just having one flat image. Um, might be something for me to look into in the future, but I got so much other stuff going on. So what I'm going to do here is some contour drawings. And this is going to be probably will give me the better understanding of the tiger itself. We'll start with the brow. So this, and I need to zoom in because, wow, well, that's small. The brow goes like this and then it curves right to the back of the head. It goes way back there. I could probably curve it down also if I wanted to. Because we're looking at a sphere shape, right? 
But what's really confusing, and I'll take this a little at a time, is I know that the bridge is not a very sharp curve, but it does have kind of a sharpness, like a peak there from the uh, shadow that I can see. And I know that this would go down deeper into the skull, kind of come back up. It looks like maybe it raises there and then back into the back of the head. If I did a vertical, let's say from up here, the slope of the forehead would hit here and then we'd go deep into that crevice of the eye socket. This is what I'm guessing, you know, because I'm looking at one image. Then there is, you know, some eyelids there. They do have eyelids. And then out to the front of the muzzle. And then this is a wonderful, like, the jowls there. I could probably, oops. Careful with that. Control X. Erase everything in the... So I could probably take this like much, you know, round it out a bit more. That goes up and under and we come out to the chin and round it out. Is it important to do an object drawing before thumbnails or are those steps interchangeable? Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. A lot of times what you'll do is, is you'll get into the thumbnail drawing and you'll realize even the most simple thing that you think is simple, like rocks, right? And then you get into this thumbnail and you're like, wow, I do not how to do, how to draw a convincing rock. Everything looks manufactured. And so, you know, and I have a really small space here for object drawing. You could go into, you know, a, a whole new document and just study some rocks for a little bit. There is a dip right there. And then in a huge, like, straight down. So I'm making just contour drawings, vertical, horizontal, all over this. And, you know, I just remembered, I could open up this document, uh, this image here that I got from art station where they did a, a three-dimensional render of a tiger and I mean here's the entirety of the the contour of a tiger's head isn't that fantastic I mean you can see up here where we have this kind of brow oh it's all black and white that's interesting what kind of document is this it's definitely not RGB That's interesting. Can I turn it red? No, I can't. <laughs> I've never uh, run into it. That's a JPEG, but it's all black and white. Edit, image, properties, image color space. Ah, there it is. I never knew that, that this was here. I just kind of found it, but if you have an image like this that has a weird color space, you can go to image, properties, image color space. You know, after dealing with programs for, you know, over a decade, um, you, things are kind of laid out in logical fashion. So I can probably change this to RGB alpha. Now I got my color back. Can't see that though. So up here, you can see that the brow really comes far out. And then everything really kind of funnels this way. I love how the slope, we can see the slope of the nose here and how it just kind of falls down. One of the most wonderful things I've ever seen that you can do to, like in life drawing specifically, this is not for tigers, but um, if you're in life drawing class and, you know, you'd have to get into a life drawing where people, 
or someone's teaching. Um, sometimes they would ask the model to put tape on. You know, there's a certain kind of tape where it doesn't stick to skin very, very well. <clears throat> and they'll just, you know, wrap tape around their arms or legs, just like cross contour. And then maybe in a couple places. And then as the model is posing, I mean, the understanding is like clicks. Oh, I could see that that arm is a cylinder and it's coming at me. I prefer life drawing where the model leaves clothes on, like underwear, like bra and underwear, um, or no bra and, and just underwear. You can, it's a perfect line that is wrapped around the body that tells you the form. Or sometimes a model will step up in the first few poses. You know how when you wear socks that are tight or underwear that's tight or, you know, clothing that's tight, the, there will be these kind of like red circles going around, you know, on your skin. Well, I mean, if it's a Caucasian model, you'll see that maybe in um, darker skin models, maybe you'll see it. But uh, looking at those indentations that are left from the, the clothing would help you. It gives that kind of cross contour. Anyway, sidetrack on that one. Let's, uh, I'm going to group these. I always like keeping things organized. So I'm going to group this and this is going to be called object. And then I want to start a new one. Interesting. Okay. Insert. Um, I'm going to stick with a camera angle. I mean, this is important. I mean, I knew it was important, the whole camera angle thing. Uh, and I identified it before. But what we can do is look at the one. There's one image that has an amazing camera. This one right here. So what I can do is I can hit S for my freeform selection tool. You know, right away, as, as I'm outlining this, I see that there's no tail. There's no, the tail's there. I'm, this tiger has a tail, I hope. Yeah, I can kind of see it back there, but we have an opportunity. You know, where we, what are we going to do with that tail? It's a very, um, it could be a very dynamic piece of this whole composition. See, there's all th kinds of things that you will not realize that you'll, you'll learn this. So I love this camera angle from below. I really enjoy, um, yeah, let's just keep it there. Put this over it. What I like about this is, you know, I'm going to say below and heroic. But as I look at this tiger here, I like this, this angle of the back. It's very dynamic. We have this kind of triangle thing going on uh, that's happening. It's kind of a trapezoid kind of shape. And when we get into those kind of shapes, this is where we can get some dynamics in. You, you think of your your subject in basic basic shapes in some way. And the most boring shape would be a square, right? If your subject fits perfectly within that square, it's pretty boring. But as soon as, you know, you adjust it, you have something like this. Now you have dynamism, right? You have form, you have space, you have interest. You know, just a triangle is more interesting. We talked about shape language before within our composition course that we were doing. Um, I want sharper angles. I want some idea of danger here. So yeah, doing these kind of things really helps with um, 
getting a better understanding. And it's it's been an hour already. Well, I started this stream maybe five minutes late. Um, but we're, we're done with the top of this process. <clears throat> the next part of it is going to be uh, taking our three colors here, our three values. No, they're not even colors. Let me see where there is. Those are lurking somewhere in this document. Where are you? Ah, there you are. It's this last one. I want to move these over. Oh, I got to unlock it. I want to move these over so that I can reach them when I'm doing the drawing, the thumbnail drawings. Might as well do it now. I'm going to hit insert and I'm going to put this one at the very top and then control G to group it. And I'm going to call it thumbs. And this is where my thumbnails are all going to go. And we have this wonderful little space on the side here. So let's prepare for the next stream. I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to paste some more reference over on this side. And we, we need to make it small, okay? Because we're looking, we're going to be doing thumbnails. And we want to get the impressions of these. And I can even go up here, image. Well, I can, if I can remember the Control-Alt-I, change the image size. Yeah, wow, that width is huge. I can change it to something like a thousand. This will make the image really small. And then I can just copy out the head. Wow, it's still huge on here. <laughs> mm, I probably won't use this one. I was gonna use this one as, you know, just get a better understanding of the form of the head. So I'll leave that in my reference images. Uh, I do like this image a lot. So image, no. Uh, control Alt I. Let's go down to a thousand on that one as well. Hit S to outline, copy, paste. Control T to change size and hold shift to keep the ratio. Definitely wanted to capture that one. And I, I'm gonna capture this one as well. I may not use it, but when you do thumbnails, it's better to kind of try other things. And I just copied that whole big thing out. It's probably huge. Oh, it's not too bad. So that one of the purposes of all these thumbnails is going to be challenging your initial idea. And that's why there's 10 of them, because your initial idea will go into the first one. So just as a quick example, because I always go over on a stream that's that has to happen. <laughs> so if, if if I create, you know, my idea here, which is tiger head, body angle like that, like this, looking off into the distance in that kind of way, um, really dark in the background. Maybe if there's a rock here, you know, and this is really bad. I mean, that's not really describing anything. Actually, uh, probably the better way of, of painting something like this would be in a really broad brush. something like this and then hit E and carve out some ideas of lighting. Yeah. 
you know you love art or you love doing this when you just you can't stop right it's like you just keep going you're like holy crap i'm just going and going and going maybe the tail no i'm not gonna put the tail up i don't think tigers do the, like house cats do where their tail goes up like that <laughs> Well, I have to look. That's some research. So maybe I come up with this idea and and then I need to come up with a second thumbnail, right? Um, but we don't just come up with the next thumbnail and, and try and refine the same thing. We don't just do the same thing. What we do is we go, okay, does that describe what we wrote about? Okay, does it show perseverance and and probably you'll say yeah i think it does maybe that works okay fine what if we change one thing and you can make it easy on yourself in a lot of ways let's say that you duplicate this layer control j duplicates t gonna move it over and then image transform where is transform at no layer transform horizontal and of course it's going to throw it all the way to that side what if a, this this uh tiger is looking a different way left to right here's something for you compositionally a compositional understanding that's it's fun the western cultures they write left to right the many Asian and Eastern cultures write right to left. So who is your audience? If you have an Asian audience, there could be a better response um, from a tiger that is facing, you know, from right to left. So this, this kind of angle, but maybe Western cultures respond more to this because it does have an effect on um, travel, on distance. And, you know, this gaze, I respond more to the gaze off to the right, which is interesting. Or at least maybe the body this way and the head, like in, in this one down here, is, is facing off this way. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to challenge every single one we do, adjust it a little bit and try and improve on it. And we work in this fashion where we go this way. Why is that important? Because hopefully by the time you get to 10 and you see the direct comparison between one and 10 that you go, wow, such a massive improvement. Why is, why is this whole crazy boring process so important? Why is it so important that you do this as an artist and not just jump right into a painting? Because you could spend a week doing a painting and then you finally show it to someone and they say, you know, this is kind of off and strange. And then it's, it's integral to the entirety of your composition. And if you do this process, you would find that right away. I've done that so many times right at the end. It's like, you know, if you would have moved the carrot, the, the, this, this whole figure over just a little bit closer to the center, it would have been so much better. If you just didn't center those two, fi those two figures or didn't butt them up against the edge, you know, that much, it, it would have been a whole new, different, better thing. So there you go. Uh, this is why we're doing this. And I'm going to erase those drawings that I just did. I'm going to save this and we're going to start it again tomorrow. We're going to be starting with actual drawing. This is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. And we're going to use just three values um, to do it. Lots of fun. Thank you for showing up again, Thinker. As always, I appreciate you uh, for showing up. And uh, yeah, I will see you tomorrow.